Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Brothers and sisters in Islam Today I would like to talk about a controversial topic That has been on the minds of many Muslims And non-Muslims often like to play on this issue as well Which is the marriage of Aisha radiallahu anha To the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Before we go into detail, we need to understand why this is such a controversial topic. You see, in the Western world today, sexual immorality is part of a huge problem in the Western society. Abuse of young children, uh, which includes both boys and girls alike, are very much prevalent. This is of course due to secularism and perhaps the ineffectiveness of moral laws that actually govern uh, these Western societies. But to go into such detail right now would be a very long discussion. In any case, uh, my point is that uh, the problems in the West has nothing to do with that of religion, but due to the lack of it. Because of these social problems, uh, which is due to secular influences, uh, these Western societies try to project their own insecurities upon other cultures. And due to the rise of Islamophobia, no thanks to the 9-11 attack on the New York Twin Towers, Western societies have looked into Islam and pointed to it as a problem for their own insecurities. So, they look into the life of the Prophet wasallam. they look into the doctrines of Islam, they look into how Muslim societies practice their Islam. Because of the inherent problems uh, in uh, Western societies due to secularism, uh, these so same societies try to project their moral superiority and their sense of cultural supremacy uh, over Muslim nations. They then look into the life of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and they try to belittle it. Of course, when we talk about Western societies, we cannot uh, divorce uh, Christianity from their uh, mental state of being. If you look into the um, culture of the Western churches, uh, they have portrayed uh, Jesus alayhi salam as a white male man, not realizing or sometimes just ignoring the fact that he was a Jew, probably brown skin as I am, or darker. Because Western society think that they have cultural supremacy over other cultures, they try to impose their own cultural or moral insecurities upon other nations. The life of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam is an open book. His life is written in the full light of history. Everyone knows how he lived his life. Everyone knows how he received the message of God. Everyone knows how he preached the message of God. Everyone knows his campaigns, his marriages, his uh, political alliances how he finally defeated the pagans and Mecca, and so on, etc, etc, etc. So Western Orientalists, fully realizing this, they have looked into the life of Muhammad since the very early beginnings of Islam. Attacking the Prophet's life is not something new for Western Orientalists, it's not something new for Christian missionaries. As I've mentioned in a previous video, it is human tendency to attack uh, the messenger instead of looking at the message. There is nothing wrong with the message of Muhammad wasallam. The only message of Muhammad wasallam is to exhort people to the worship of the one true God. Now, it is very interesting to note that um, throughout the life of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, uh, the Christians have never tried to dismantle the concept of this exhaustion to the worship of the one true God. Going back to the life of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we know that he married his first and only wife Khatija 
during the early phase of his mission. When Hadija radiallahu anha passed away in Mecca, the Prophet uh, did not marry anyone else for a time. Only after he, he made his migration or the Hijrah uh, to Medina, uh, did he actually consider remarrying again. So most of these marriages were political alliances. Uh, they were with widows. The one and only marriage that he had with a virgin was Aisha radiallahu anha. She was the daughter of Abu Bakr, the closest companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who later became the first caliph of the Muslim Empire. So food for thought. Do you really believe that this great empire that arose from a very small community in Medina can be inspired by a sexual deviant? Do you really believe that a small community could rule the world which started from someone you claim to be a sexual or morally incompetent person? Where in history can you find someone who is morally incompetent or a sexual deviant to be able to rule the world for 1,000 years and until today, remnants of that empire still remains, including my country, Malaysia. We know that Christians always try to attack uh, the marriage of Aisha, Rodiwahu Anha, to the Prophet so they refer to the hadith uh, of Bukhari. I don't have to repeat it, I think. I believe most of the viewers, including the non-Muslims, already know what the hadith say. Um, basically, the hadith say that um, Aisha was betrothed at six years old and she was married to the Prophet when she was nine. The Christians will try to say that this marriage is morally deficient because the prophet married a nine-year-old. But the problem with their assertion is that there is a time period between the time that Aisha Rodiwa Wahanha was betrothed when she was six right up to age nine where she was accepted or she started to live into the household of the prophet Sallallahu one interesting of note to point out is that the enemies of Islam, especially the uh, early Orientalists and uh, Christian missionaries, uh, beginning from the time of John of Damascus, who has written uh, polemical stuff and very uh, misleading and false information about Islam, right up to the uh, early 20th century, uh, none of them has ever mentioned about the marriage of Aisha radiallahu anha to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They have never made an issue of her age. Why is it that today's uh, Christian missionaries and hateful people like the uh, psychopath David Wood kept harping on this issue? As I said previously, Western secularism has caused such havoc uh, in the morality and the practices of Western Christians to the point that they abandon their own traditions. Uh, they don't regard marriages to be sacred anymore, at least for those who are not very religious. And they definitely do not care about the moral state of their societies. Of course, there are some fundamentalists in uh, every society, but they are a minority and they don't uh, represent the majority of Western societies. The Muslim world does not have any problems with uh, sexual abuses of young boys and girls. There are uh, problems uh, and there are some small cases involving this, but it is not a widespread problem. It is usually dealt with swiftly and uh, society shun such uh, moral deviances. So, in a way, you can say that the problem of pedophilia or the issue of so-called perceived underage uh, relationships uh, is never an issue 
in the uh, Muslim world. It is not even an issue in Asia, particularly. Because until today, we can still see uh, certain countries like Thailand, like um, China even, and in India, and certain remote places, uh, even in Africa, which practices the custom of marrying off their women at puberty. This is actually a cultural thing. It is not a problem of morality. It is a common practice for those societies to marry off women when they reach puberty. The problem with uh, raising the issue of Aisha Rodio Anha is that it just shows the immaturity of these people who think that their culture is more superior than other cultures of the world. I'm sorry to say this, Westerners, but your culture do not define us. To further uh, elucidate on this matter, I would like to play a clip uh, from Dr. Jonathan Brown. Uh, as a brief intro to who he is, uh, Dr. Jonathan Brown is a professor at Georgetown University. Uh, he is a professor in Hadith Studies. He has studied the biography of the Prophet Wasallam. He has written extensive books on the matter. And yes, he is a Muslim. He is a white male Muslim American. So let's hear what he has to say, and then I shall continue from there. Non-Muslims, from the life in the community of the Prophet in Medina, from his opponents in Mecca, to John of Damascus, died 749, in his polemics against Islam, to uh, Matthew of Paris in the 1100s, to uh, Voltaire, to uh, Gibbon, to the Chanson de Roland, to uh, anybody who wants to insult the prophet. They had tons of information. They, they, want, they, they were looking for anything they could use to insult the prophet. And they, his sex life was target numero uno. They, make, they also insult him for marrying Aisha. Why? Because he was so obsessed, he's so lustful. He's such an, uh, he's such an id-driven creature. I don't believe this, just in case someone is recording this, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just quoting the opinion of others. He's such an id-driven creature that he has this fantasy of Aisha, a dream about her, and he wants to marry her. No one ever mentions her age, ever, that I found until 1905. Uh, the British historian David Margoliath has a book on the rise of Islam, the prophet in Islam. And he mentions this and he says it's an ill-advised union. For how else should we characterize the marriage between a man of 53 and a girl of 9? This is the first I've ever seen that anyone mentions this. Why is that? Why is that until the early 20th century, no one talks about this. When they are good, they are making stuff up about the prophet to insult him. And they don't bring this up. Because they were all marrying underage girls too. I mean, you have to understand that pre-modern, in fact, even today, have peasant societies, to use the Marxist term, you know, societies where you have the vast majority of people live in small agricultural communities and agricultural work is the predominant form of, of, of livelihood. Marriage is very early, especially for women, generally right after puberty. And I, as I tell my students, yeah, yeah, Gandhi got married very young. Because you have to remember, and I've said this before in other lectures, and I think it's very important, our notions of what you're supposed to do in life are based on our lifestyle. If you don't have high school and college, or whatever, college and university, and you know, medical school and you have to go get a job. If you're just living in the desert and you're tending goats all day and you're a good boy and you go through puberty and being a boy, <coughs> male who's gone through puberty, I can tell you, speak for the rest of the men out there, basically 99.9% .9 of your brain at that point is occupied with sex. And I don't know what the percentage is with women, but I assume that women at some point start getting interested in sex too. And uh, you're sitting out there with goats and you've got nothing to do, you have no hope in your life of ever doing anything except tending goats, 
Why in God's name would you not get married? It makes no sense. Of course you should. And they're like, oh, you're not emotionally mature. What? What is that emotional mature? What does that mean, emotionally mature? This guy doesn't know what emotionally mature is. He's a, he, he doesn't... People don't think about that. Well, what about, you know, power dynamic in your relationship? What? Power dynamic in the relationship? This is all not, this is all, this is all completely anachronistic concepts we're imposing on the past or on societies that justify we maybe don't care about this. So my, my the argument, no one, no one mentioned this because it wasn't a concern. And England, interestingly enough, well, historically has relatively high marriage ages, even in the Middle Ages, in the mid-20s. Mid England's a very odd place, historically, in that sense. But the, uh, this starts becoming an issue in the 20th century. So to summarize what uh, Dr. Jonathan Brown is actually saying, he's saying that uh, the claims of so-called uh, pedophilia or the allegations that uh, there is a sexual uh, deviancy when the Prophet uh, married Aisha Rodi Anha. Uh, these are all anachronistic concepts which uh, did not exist 1,400 years ago. You cannot use the standards of what we have today and impose it upon a culture that existed 1,400 years ago. To claim that uh, the uh, Prophet Sallallahu was uh, somehow wrong in uh, marrying Aisha, uh, to me this is uh, just an example of uh, so-called self-imposed uh, cultural imperialism. So to conclude, uh, here are the things that I would like to say. The marriage of a woman at puberty is a common practice in uh, many cultures. This includes uh, Asia, uh, especially the Middle East, especially when you're talking about 1,400 years ago. There are many examples uh, in uh, Western uh, civilization where the women were married off when they reached puberty. We don't see or hear uh, Christian apologists or even psychopaths uh, questioning uh, this kind of marriages. It was the norm, all right? This, this is actually a common practice uh, for those who lived way before uh, our current modern comforts. Uh, in ancient times, people don't care at the time whether they are ready for marriage or whether they are physically comfortable with marriage or whether they have a job career stability or etc 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 these are all concepts or uh, issues which only exist now in our current times it did not exist 1400 years ago so if someone were to say uh, that there is an issue with the marriage of aisha my answer to them is uh, please shove your western cultural imperialism up a place where the sun does not shine however uh, since uh, there are still those who would insist uh, that the marriage of Aisha is uh, invalid or is morally incompatible, I will, uh, in my next video, inshallah, uh, give several examples from the Bible uh, regarding uh, such marriages. Specifically, the issue of Rebecca marrying Isaac when she was three years old. One more thing I should mention is, by no means I'm saying that Isaac was morally deficient when he married Rebecca at three years old. It is only Christian apologists and polemicists who have an issue with this uh, particular statement. This is because, as I mentioned way earlier on, they have been enamored by Western uh, cultural supremacy and they don't seem to be aware that when we talk about the marriage of Rebecca and uh, Isaac, this is even way beyond uh, the era of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. We are probably talking about 30,000 years or 50,000 years or maybe even 100,000 years ago. So definitely times and uh, cultural mores were even more different than that of Arabia uh, in the 6th century. 
Anyway, I will leave this particular issue for another video. And I think uh, the point has been made regarding the marriage of the Prophet to Aisha Rodiwa Wanha. I will address the issue of Rebecca's uh, marriage to Isaac uh, in a different video. You should be following what Jesus said about taking out the log in your own eye before you point out a speck in others. Anyway, I would like to end this video here. Thank you very much for listening to me, especially to my brothers and sisters in Islam. I hope uh, this video has been uh, educational and I hope this video uh, has helped you in understanding uh, the issues surrounding uh, the marriage of Aisha Rodio Wanha uh, and uh, defend our faith from uh, those uh, nasty uh, Christian polemicists and apo Christian apologies or missionaries, especially that psychopath. If you like this video, please fo don't forget to like it. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to the button below. And uh, inshallah, I hope to see you again in my next video. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.